Hello, my name is Kent Tramell, and I want to share this tutorial with you about using cloth simulation for modeling fabric. Now before I start, I want to clear up any confusion you might have. This technique is designed for generating static geometry, it's not a guide for animating the curtain. Though I would likely approach an animated curtain similarly, that's not the purpose of this tutorial. Um, the cloth dynamics native to Blender are very useful for this type of thing. You see it a lot in architectural visualizations for curtains, bed comforters, towels, all the common fabrics you might see in an interior. So why use simulation and not simply model it? Well, if you've ever modeled fabric, you know that there's nothing simple about it. It's very time consuming and difficult to get a believable look. As an artist, I usually like to spearhead any modeling task with sculpting, which uh, can be fun when it comes to fabric, but for things like curtains and towels, simulation is a much faster way to achieve a believable result. Now, anytime we're trying to create something believable in the computer, we always need to go to the source first, uh, which is reality, of course. So here in my uh, UV image editor, I have a few images uh, that will be my reference for creating this cloth. And up top, we have just the classic big main curtain as it uh, sits in this theater. And, uh, and this is the simplest of simulations. Uh, it's pretty much just flat with a little bit of uh, folding and creasing uh, going from top to bottom. Um, below this one in the gold image, the reason I'm using this is I really like what's happening up here uh, at the top, these top curtains, where we're getting these nice um, kind of round oval shapes. And then uh, over here to the right, this will be a curtain off to the left and right of the main curtain, in front of the main curtain, where around the middle of the curtain, it's just pulling off to one side, revealing what's behind it. So uh, now's where we kind of use our common sense and we have to figure out how this would be achieved in real life because we're using simulation and the simulation is calculating what happens in real life. So in order to manipulate our fabric into shape, we need to do that the same way we would in real life or, or at least mimic the same way we would in real life. So looking at this main curtain, how do we think this happens? If you have a curtain right now, if you're at home and you have curtains up in your windows, you probably have a curtain rod or definitely in your shower you have this kind of curtain where um, there's almost certainly a curtain rod up top and then we also have little rings that are attached to the curtain, the little holes in the curtain. And so due to the weight of the curtain that's pulling down, these rings actually move slightly towards one another. And this is where we get um, this rippling uh, and folding in the curtain all the way down. So how we can approach this in Blender is create a big plane, um, bigger than what we actually want our uh, curtain to look in the end. And that's because when we simulate it, we will pull this top edge in towards the middle. And as we do that, the curtain simulation has no choice but to ripple from top to bottom, just like we see in this reference. Down here in this gold image, uh, you can see that uh, the length top to bottom of the curtain is larger than what we see here. So I would say that it's, you know, about this length before it's pulled up into shape. And then at uh, specific areas like right there, right there, right there, we have other pieces of fabric or rope that's pulling upwards. And so where it's not being pulled, we're left with these nice uh, round shapes. So again, we will do that uh, in the computer the same way that that's done uh, in reality. And likewise with this one as well. You can see up here at the top that this one is not uh, pinching or folding too much uh, lengthwise. So this is almost the um, actual width of the curtain fabric. But um, I would say that the fabric is actually looking something like this, uh, laid out perfectly flat. And then once it's placed on the rod, we have some uh, shrinking this way, which results in some slight uh, folding down here. But then we have a lot of folding when um, this piece of fabric pulls this way, bunching up our curtain and uh, giving us all these nice wrinkles. This too will be how we um, achieve it in the computer. So this is actually a lot of fun, or it can be a lot of fun when it, when it goes your way, because simulation is a lot like uh, playing or experimenting. All right, so uh, let's get to work. I'll jump into my 3D view, and uh, this is the starting scene that you will have if you download the source files. And this is um, exactly what I use to render the image at the top of the post. And uh, that will be included so you can, can reference whatever you want to use the scene um, for your own renders or whatever. 
but uh, this is located in these two layers over here. So uh, to get this started, I'm just going to jump to layer one, and uh, which is an empty layer, and I will add a plane, shift a mesh plane. I will jump into edit mode with tab, hit RX to rotate it 90 degrees, and then hit GZ1, move it uh, one unit up in the Z direction, and uh, then change my pivot point to cursor, and scale this guy up to match the grid. Then I can scale it down in Z to make it uh, more horizontal than vertical. Okay, so for cloth simulation, I'm going to want a very even grid of topology across my mesh. This will just produce uh, better results. So uh, in order to achieve this, I'm going to cut, let's see, I'm gonna cut four edge loops uh, top to bottom and then cut one the other way. Uh, that will produce some uh, pretty regular squares. And then I'll select everything and uh, let's make this a little bigger. I will, um, let's see, go to my tools and find, where is it? Subdivide right here. I'm going to subdivide once, twice, three times, and four times. As you can imagine, the more subdivisions, the more um, calculation the computer has to do, and it will be slower. And I actually might go up one more because I'm imagining my person being about this tall. And I think that one extra subdivision wouldn't hurt. So let me uh, do that one more time. Yeah, I think that's going to be good. So this will be our um, piece of geometry, our initial fabric stretched out perfectly to its full extent. And now I'm ready to select some vertices that will be pinned instead of simulated. So let me jump to my object data, jump back into edit mode. And what I want to do here is uh, just like um, if I had some rings that were going through holes at the top of my curtain, I'm going to want to select some vertices to uh, represent those rings. And, uh, and this is important to me to be random with my selection here. I don't want to go in here and count, oh, I skipped three, so skip three more picks, three more pick, three more pick. The problem with that is it will produce very um, cookie cutter results, like all the folds will look almost identical. And that's just because the computer is calculating it identically. There's no other random agents to make that different. So just to help this process, I'm going to introduce some randomness by eyeballing the selection and very quickly picking and, and uh, selecting my vertices. Um, Cool, so these vertices represent a ring um, that would be attached to a curtain rod. Uh, now I need to add them to a vertex group. Go down here uh, under the vertex group tab, hit the plus button. I'm gonna rename this pin and then uh, hit assign. Don't forget to hit assign because just creating the group does not actually assign any vertices to that group. So with a weight of one, I'm going to click assign. And, uh, and now we can make this thing a cloth object. Over here on the far right, we have the physics tab. Click on that, and then with the cloth selected, I will just click the cloth button. This brings up the cloth settings uh, below it. And I will just um, leave this at cotton for now, the, the preset of cotton. And then I'll go over these settings uh, in a little bit as I go on. But uh, I will set up my pinning. So down here we have a checkbox called pinning. We'll click that on. And then we have a vertex group selection and I'll uh, click my pin vertex group, leave all the other settings as is. And uh, in order to run a, a cloth simulation in the viewport, I can easily do that by uh, having my mouse cursor in the viewport and hitting alt a. You'll notice that the viewport slows down significantly as I try to rotate around and up in the top left corner, you can see FPS in red. And when it's in red, that means that the frames per second, is, is running lower than real time. And that's understandable for this cloth simulation. But even though this is running and we can we know that this is running because the computer has slowed down so much, we can also see that the playhead is going forward in time, but we're not seeing anything happen. So let me hit Alt A and then jump back to the beginning and let's try that again. Yeah, we really don't see much happen. Um, if I hit Alt A, and if you see this blue line at the uh, bottom of the timeline, this means that there's a cache in place for this cloth. So I can scrub through it in real time, but um, you do notice that it's, it's being deleted. This brings up a very good point 
that um, by default a cloth sim will have a cache um, without you setting anything up but it, it's very easily forgotten as you can see that uh, just scrubbing the playhead backwards in time has now forgotten all of these frames that were cached so this is not a huge deal right now I don't I don't care that I lost that information or that time because it, it's not unbearably slow but if you uh, want to have a cache set up you can see here that this is uh, the default cache that Blender adds as soon as you um, make this object a cloth object. And um, let's see, we can name it right here. We can name it um, My Cache. Then we can click the Disk Cache option. And uh, do note that uh, you must save your .blend file in order for this to work because this will be writing uh, to your blend directory inside your blend file. But um, for this tutorial, I'm not going to be using uh, the cache or not going to be writing it to the disk, just using the default setup. And the reason you really didn't see anything happen when I simulated this is because I didn't set up any difference in the cloth. So right now we've got the cloth pulled out to its max uh, uh, distance. It's laid out completely flat. And then when I pinned those specific verts, it's pinned in its uh, most stretched out form. So the cloth has nowhere to go. It has nothing to do, no wrinkles to make because it's so stretched out. So we have to manipulate that in order to get a cloth like result. So I can jump into my uh, edit mode again, go back to object data and uh, actually jump out of edit mode first because I want to add a shape key. In the shape key drop down below vertex groups, I'm gonna hit that plus button and by default it creates the basis so I need to press it again to get um, a, a blendable shape key. So let's uh, change that to one, all the way up to one, jump back into edit mode and I'm going to uh, hit S, X to scale in the X direction and you can see that these verts which are my pinned verts I'm going to scale that in towards itself about about like that. So uh, in my shape key settings, there's a little toggle down here that um, says apply shape keys in edit mode for meshes only. We're gonna turn that on, that way we can um, adjust or uh, scrub through the shape key slider while in edit mode. And we can see what that animation is going to look like. So uh, jump back out of edit mode to object mode. And uh, on frame one, uh, I'm going to set this uh, shape key to zero, a value of zero and hit insert keyframe by right clicking over the number uh, insert keyframe and then uh, I'm going to jump forward to frame 120 and uh, I'm going to change that to one and uh, hit insert keyframe again now we have two keyframes that uh, if you can see in the viewport as I go to uh, wireframe mode you can see the um, shrinking of those pinned verts so that's what's going to happen um, and because they are pinned verts I have set that up in the physics tab the cloth will respect them and and will get some wrinkling so uh, with that set up let me go back to the first frame and uh, and hit alt a again all right so uh, i've pressed alt a to stop the animation and you can see that the blue line only went to frame 250 and the reason for that is over in the cloth cache settings, the default is 250, which I believe is the blender default uh, frame range. So uh, that's the reason uh, it stopped at 250 and then continued playing without actually simulating. So uh, thanks to this little cache that we have in memory, not written to the disk, I can right click uh, in that blue line. And um, as I go backwards, you can see that it starts to delete the frames and that's fine because the cloth kind of came to this resting position uh, before 250 so that is okay but um, just keep that in mind don't go too far back when you can't uh, get the shape that you want or you know what let me just go ahead and turn on disk cache and uh, let it write to my blend file that way I won't have to deal with that anymore but anyway so uh, back to the curtain shape um, what I'm gonna do is smooth the shading on it right now to get a better idea and, and this isn't bad um, this kind of gives me the feel that I want from that curtain and that we're pretty familiar with. But uh, if I if I kind of rotate or orbit my view down, we can see that the curtain is extending below um, this grid. So I do just kind of a little nice touch that I want to add to this specific curtain is I want this to barely be touching the ground. 
uh, to kind of add some some difference to the bottom of the curtain and some variety rather than having all these folds just uh, go perfectly straight down like they are right now I want some resistance uh, on the floor so the way that I can achieve that if I jump back to the beginning of my uh, timeline I will lose my cloth simulation because I did not write the cache to the disk but now I will be and I'm going to add another plane shift a mesh plane this one I'm just going to scale up as is about eh, that about that big and control a apply the scale and then I will move my time slider to frame 60 it doesn't doesn't really matter as long as it's after the first frame and I will uh, in the viewport hit I for insert keyframe and go to uh, pick location now jump back to the beginning of uh, my timeline and move my plane down just a little bit insert another uh, location keyframe this way uh, when the simulation starts the the ground plane is below the curtain and then once it gets to frame 60 it will um, be level with the grid and then our curtain will be respecting that as the floor uh, so in order to actually make the cloth respect that in the physics tab with my uh, ground plane selected I will just click the collision button now that it's a collision object any cloth object will respect it so let's jump back to the beginning of my timeline and uh, let's try simulating that okay so um, you can see how the floor has uh, caused the curtains to kind of uh, fold at its resistance and uh, and we don't have any blue line and that's okay because once I click the disk cache we lose the blue line but if I scroll through it's playing it real time that means it, it's reading the cache from the disk we don't have to worry about uh, losing those frames that we just sat and and watched simulating now just a disclaimer I am speeding up the time it takes to simulate this cloth but you will not be able to do that and simulating cloth is like watching paint dry it's just it takes a long time and you can't really get around it well I should say that each simulation in itself doesn't take that long but chances are you're not gonna get it right the first or the second or the fifth time you're gonna want to tweak these settings and really dial in the behavior of the cloth then you'll watch that you know three three to five minute simulation you know 20 times and that starts to add up but anyway that's just the nature of the workflow so keep that in mind as we go um, I actually I like the behavior of the cloth so far I think that that's pretty believable and, uh, and it's it's a decent weight to the cloth a decent thickness like I, I like the feel and behavior of it but I want to take this opportunity to go over the uh, cloth settings that we have in blender in the physics panel with my cloth selected we conveniently have some presets that come standard with Blender, but um, when we tweak these settings, we can also add our own presets, which is nice. But I have been using the cotton preset. And that's a good standard kind of material um, to start your simulations at. But we have some others like denim, leather, rubber, silk. Um, this silk cotton one is, is one of my own that I added. But I, I love to use these as a base to start out with. If I know my cloth is going to be a thicker material, I'll go click on, you know, denim and then simulate it and then start to tweak those settings from there rather than start from like silk and, and have to figure out each setting to make it behave like a, a sturdier fabric. So that's the benefit of the presets. Uh, below that we have quality and this is sort of like the samples in a render. It's just going to uh, increase the quality of the simulation as the number goes up, which also causes the simulation time to increase as well. Uh, below that we have uh, material settings. So we have mass, which is you know how heavy this is, how much effect does gravity uh, pull this material down. Below that we have a structural value and this is kind of the overall thickness or like starchiness to the material. Denim is, is uh, stiffer than silk of course. Uh, below that we have bending and this has to do with the wrinkles. The higher the value here for bending makes the wrinkles um, larger in general. The lower the value then the finer the wrinkles are. So you can guess that for silk we have a very low bending uh, value but if I jump up to uh, denim or leather even we have bending at 150 
So that's a big difference, and uh, leather will not be uh, having very many fine wrinkles at all. Um, let me jump back to cotton. And then we have some dampening settings over here. Uh, anything to do with dampening is, is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, it's trying to subdue or, or calm the effect a little bit. So the first value is uh, the spring value. And a common you know issue that you see with uh, computer generated simulation of cloth is that the geometry doesn't always like to settle because it's constantly simulating. It's constantly wanting to update um, the shape of the cloth. And so commonly you won't see a lot of settling by itself. Like if I drop a towel on the ground, it's going to bounce around briefly and then settle and it's not going to move anymore. Um, we need to control that here in the spring uh, dampening setting. The higher the value, the more smooth and, and less jiggling. But if, the, if it's too high, then it won't be a believable simulation. So you can't say, I want it to just be the smoothest. I'll just crank this number up. You have to dial it in so that it still bounces and, and responds properly, but, but comes to settle at a believable rate. Uh, below that, we have air. So air that we breathe, the atmosphere has thickness, it has density, which uh, actually causes resistance. You've heard of air resistance. Um, so as the cloth falls, this controls how much air resistance is in effect. Um, below that, we have velocity. This works uh, in conjunction with the others, again, to help the resting position. So when the cloth is done reacting, this number will dial in how quickly it comes to a, a complete stop and no more simulation happening. Uh, below that, we've already uh, established that we have some pinning settings um, where we pick our vertex group. This is awesome. The stiffness. And if I turn the stiffness down, uh, the pinned vertices will not have 100% effect. Um, below that, we have a pre-roll, which is nice because um, you can start the simulation before the actual time range. So that's nice. And then the rest key shape is uh, basis. This only shows up because I have a shape key applied to this mesh. All right. Um, again, I'm pretty happy with this. We do have some problems down here, though. Uh, we have some intersection happening uh, in some of the folds. And the reason for that, if I scroll down below my cloth cache settings, we have cloth collision settings. And by default, Blender sets up the cloth to respect um, other collision objects, but uh, to respect its own collisions, that is turned off by default. And the reason for this is it speeds up the simulation time. But you also get these intersections when the folds uh, become a little too extreme. So in this case, you know, I could probably get away with it um, just if I was, you know, desperate to save on simulation time. But I'm actually going to turn that on and leave the defaults. But uh, to go over the defaults, uh, quality again, this is like samples in a render, higher quality. It'll take longer, but it will be a better simulation. Below that, we have distance. And this you can think of this like the uh, thickness of the cloth. The cloth needs to know its own thickness um, so it knows what distance to respect the collision. If it's a lower number, then two faces will be closer together before they collide with each other. But if this distance is a larger number, then they will uh, collide further apart. So that's the distance setting uh, over here. And it's the same with these uh, settings over to the left, which again are for uh, collision objects in the scene. Quality of two, distance of 0.015. And then some additional settings like repel, which can cause the cloth to actually uh, resist and, and try to get away from the collision object. Uh, that's set to zero by default. Um, and then we have a repel distance, which works in conjunction with repel, not important here. And then we have friction. So like, is this material something that would stick to the surface that it's colliding with? Or is it really slick and doesn't stick at all? That can be a very relevant setting. All right, those are the cloth collision settings. Now that I've turned self collision on, I'm going to uh, rerun this simulation, which will uh, hopefully take care of all that uh, penetration. All right, let's uh, come down here. Yeah, I don't see any more uh, self penetration, so uh, self collisions is fixed. It did take just slightly longer to simulate that whole thing. Well, I actually stopped it at 140 because that's a, a believable enough rest position. So that's a, that's not bad. I actually, I like the depth of the folds. I think that's pretty good and believable. There's just one more thing I want to add to this simulation that will introduce some more randomness. 
So let me jump back to the beginning and hit Shift A, Force Field, Turbulence. So uh, with this Force Field, like all the Force Fields, the cloth will respect uh, the effect. Now Turbulence is really just kind of like a general noise for the cloth simulation, and you'll see what I mean. But um, if I was to change this, let's see, uh, in my physics settings, if I was to change this to, uh, it's from Turbulence to like, you know, Wind, then the cloth would blow in the direction that the wind force is pointing. Uh, in a theater, there isn't much wind, so a turbulence is going to be the effect that I want. So let me turn the strength up to like 30 and uh, see what that gives us. There we go, I like that sim. Pretty happy with that. You can see it here at the beginning just a little bit, just this very subtle effect of the turbulence um, being added to the wrinkles before um, they come to the rest position. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to select my curtain now that I'm, I'm happy with this and I'll jump to my object data, I'm sorry, no, my modifiers panel. And uh, the cloth appears as a modifier here, so I can click apply as shape key. And then if I jump to my object data, and uh, we have a new cloth uh, shape key, and that becomes um, the final effect, uh, whatever frame it was on when I hit apply as shape key. All right, so I'm going to call this curtain or the simulation of this curtain finished. And uh, just to finish off what this uh, overall main curtain will look like, I'm going to move this off to the side, hit shift D and X to duplicate and uh, move it in the X direction, RZ and rotate 180. Line that back up just so uh, it's not the exact same thing moved over. It'll look a little different from the other side. And then to avoid this intersection in the middle, I'm going to select this last edge, hit O to turn on proportional editing, GY to move it slightly back so we don't have any intersections happening. Do that again down there just a little. Okay, great. So uh, later I'll be able to apply a solidify modifier and just give it some thickness. All right, so for the next curtain, I'm going to again duplicate this piece of geometry. Shift D, move it forward in Y just a little and then hit M and move it to the second layer. Now let's go grab that uh, second layer so that's all that's visible. And I'm going to delete our two shape keys, leaving us with um, the flat plane ready for another simulation. So for this one, it doesn't need to be quite so wide. I'm going to delete um, this half of faces. There we go, it should be good. Select everything and just kind of move it um, over the origin so the origin's somewhat centered. All right, so we've already gone over how we want to achieve this curtain and it is, uh, the one I'm going for now is gonna be this one down here. So just to refresh, we uh, want our plane to look similar to this when it's flat and then our animation will scoot the um, top vertices over and also uh, we'll need a piece of geometry to pull the middle of the curtain um, off to the side. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is get my pinned verts organized. Let's just uh, hit the select button and we actually have a good uh, selection of pinned verts from our other uh, cloth simulation. So I'm going to leave that as is, then tab back uh, into object mode, add a shape key, move the shape key up to one. Also, let's go ahead and put the um, uh, playhead at 120. Now jump back into edit mode, and then I'm going to deselect this last vert and select it again so it becomes active. And then on my pivot point uh, selection, I'll choose active element. Now for the um, shape key animation, we will hit S, X, and just like we did previously, let's turn off proportional editing with O, hit S, X, and scale it in X to about a little more than halfway, something like that. And then if we scrub through the um, shape key slider, we can see what that animation will look like. So we get the same effect that we did before with um, the wrinkles going top to bottom. Let's move that up to one. And because this is shape key one, our keyframes are maintained over here. So that's, uh, that's set up very good. Now we know what that will give us, uh, just exactly what it gave us before, but we want to add a piece of geometry, a very low poly piece of geometry to aid and customize this simulation. So I will hit Shift A Mesh Torus, 
then uh, go over here in the uh, add torus option scroll down to where we see major and minor segments I'm going to change this to um, 8 and 4 really low poly then I will jump into edit mode um, select these back verts X for delete the vertices then um, select uh, the open holes in our torus hit um, E and X and just um, extrude those out in the X direction maybe not that far something like that and then what I want to do is also make this a little thinner but I don't want to scale it I will select these verts hit GX move it uh, I mean GY move it in the Y direction just a little bit hit uh, control minus to um, shrink that selection down one segment GY and move it in closer like that do the same thing to the other side There we go, so that's a, a thinner shape to our, our little proxy model here. Okay, now I'm ready to move this into position. Let's just move it up. Um, to sort of uh, surround our piece of geometry, uh, our cloth simulation geometry. Move that a little closer. Maybe move it down just a hair. And then on frame one, I will hit I to insert a keyframe and go down to lock rot or location and rotation. Let's pick that. And then um, go beyond 120 to about 160. Let's move it in X about about to there. Well, maybe like that. And then R Y. Let's rotate it up a little bit. That uh, rotation might not do much in the simulation, but anyway. And then I will hit uh, Insert Lock Rot again. So this is what um, our animation will play like. And that should give us a nice simulation that will represent that uh, curtain that's pulled off to the side. So let's make this cloth uh, geometry an actual cloth object. In my physics panel, hit cloth. And then again, let's just start with uh, cotton. Also turn on self collisions because uh, I can guarantee we'll get some self um, penetration if I don't have that on. All right, let's uh, make sure we're on frame one and hit alt A to sim this. And uh, whoops, I have forgotten two things. One, in the cloth uh, settings again, I need to turn on pinning and select uh, the pin vertex group. Also, with this object, I need to actually make it a collision object. Uh, there we go, that should uh, give us a proper simulation now. Okay, so let me scrub back through um, the cloth simulation, and it looks pretty good. I think I want um, this section to be a little bit more pinched uh, in the middle. And so I have it pretty close with this geometry to, to get it that far over from the start position, but I'm thinking that the cloth might be a little too stiff. Maybe cotton is not the right choice. So let me change that setting and then sim again. Go back to the start frame and let's uh, pick my cloth object and choose uh, silk. Then hit Alt A. Okay, that looks pretty good. I like that cloth quality uh, much better. We have some very, very nice um, thin wrinkling happening uh, with our curtain, which is very cool. I want to change two more things um, that I think will give me the sim that I want. And one of them is going to be moving this guy a little bit further over to the left, like like that. Uh, and I need to insert that uh, location rotation keyframe one more time. And that was, sorry about that, that was a, a little glitch. Uh, but Anyway, I have uh, set that new keyframe on frame 160, and now on frame 120, I want to uh, tab into edit mode for my cloth object, and I don't want to pull all of these uh, pin verts this far to the left. So instead of um, coming to my object data panel and resetting this keyframe, I will just scale these in X uh, back out, making sure that active pivot is, is enabled SX, let's move that back out a little further. There we go, so tabbing back into object mode and simming this one more time uh, will hopefully be, be a final sim, uh, fingers crossed.
There we go. Let's take a look at this. And yeah, I think I'm going to be um, happy with uh, this simulation. So just like the other one, let's go to the modifier, hit apply as shape key and uh, turn off the animated shape key and we can um, see our curtain in its final position. Now let me unhide my other curtains. That looks cool. I can duplicate this curtain and uh, RZ rotate it 180 and uh, move that to the other side. That's given us pretty cool little effect like theater curtains. And that only leaves uh, one more curtain up here at the top. And I'm going to try and make this um, curve like maybe, yeah, about four um, different pieces hanging down. Uh, I will delete this uh, grease pencil mark. And like these side curtains, I'm going to start um, by, let's see, selecting uh, this first curtain, hitting Shift D to duplicate it, move it in front of all the other curtains. And let's delete the shape keys to uh, make it flat again. Kind of center it up in front of the other curtains too. And uh, we are going to manipulate this one with uh, only one shape key. So uh, let's move it to its own layer, move it to layer three with M, then uh, activating that layer and tabbing into edit mode. I want to make a few more selections. So I want to select this edge with alt, uh, alt clicking, that edge, one in the middle, just eyeballing where the middle's at. Let's say right there, that's pretty close. And finally, um, that one as well. So with all of this selected, uh, and actually let me go up, and I don't want two verts beside each other selected. So let me uh, kind of clean that up. There you go, that'll be good. Um, then in my vertex groups, I want to assign these vertices. Let me go ahead and invert the selection and then remove so that uh, nothing else um, is included in that vertex group. Tab back out into object mode, create a new shape key. Let's uh, turn it up to one and uh, tab back into edit mode so we can manipulate its shape. Uh, let's scale it in uh, the X direction. Well, make my pivot point median SX, scale it into itself just a little bit and then zoom in to select this top vertice, make it active, change our pivot point to active element SZ, move that up to about, let's say about right there, and then I'll hit Z to go into wireframe, uh, grab C for my circle select, deselect the outside edges of vertices, SZ, scale in just a little bit more, repeat the process, uh, hit C and deselect uh, the, these outer edges again, SZ, move that middle one up even further. So this will give us an effect uh, kind of stepping up uh, the curtains just to kind of be creative. So um, now with that set up, we can scrub through the timeline and see uh, what our shape will be over time manipulating the cloth. So uh, go to frame one. Now go to my cloth settings, make this a cloth object. Uh, we'll keep it at cotton for now. Let's turn on pinning and select my pin uh, vertex group and also turn on self collision because there's going to be a lot of tight folding happening. So I want to try and eliminate the self collision as much as possible. So making sure again, it's on frame one and hitting alt a. All right, let's see how that's doing. I like the bunching and uh, and the folds. They're pretty intense folds, so we're getting some uh, self penetration. If I add a um, let's see subdivision surface modifier, we should be able to see this a little more easily. Yeah, we can see in areas like this, we're getting some interpenetration and uh, kind of all the way down this. So I want to get rid of that a little bit. I, I think a way that might help is to introduce some turbulence again. Uh, throughout the simulation. So if I turn on layer one and then move this um, force to layer three, and hopefully that turbulence might help out some of the wrinkling or self-penetration. So, uh, well, I guess before I start uh, simulating, let me select my cloth object and I will change my distance from 0.75 to one, which is the maximum distance according to the description. So let's see if that helps or hinders anything.
There we go. I'm going to go ahead and stop it even before I get to frame 120 and, uh, and scrub through. This gives a much better um, effect with the uh, turbulence added because um, if we go to the beginning, you can see that the wrinkles start uh, much sooner than it was without the turbulence. So that's pretty nice. And I'm going to um, leave it about like that. I think that's going to be a nice shape. So again, go to my uh, modifier panel and uh, apply as a shape key. Let's go to my shape keys and turn it on. Now unhide all my other layers. Let's go ahead and get rid of this guy. What I can do is move this up, um, kind of hide this top portion, cut it off maybe to about right there um, with my wall. So uh, now that the simulation's done and I have some uh, pretty nice looking curtains, I can just uh, unhide my uh, geometry from my floor, my walls, and all my lights. Get rid of this um, simulation ground plane. There we go. Select all my curtains and uh, just change my pivot point to uh, 3D cursor, scale it up, and then just position this into place so that it uh, looks appropriate. Maybe scale it in X. I'm fine to do that. Scale it in Y as well. And there we go. We've got some uh, fairly believable curtains. I hope this technique has come across as more efficient than to say try and sculpt or model these curtains uh, traditionally. But with a simulator, we can take advantage and very quickly get some uh, very nice looking curtains that we can use in architectural visualizations. Or even with some more work, you could take the same technique and uh, set it up for animation. But um, I use this technique a lot for all kinds of things with cloth, even a clothes, like I've done a dress for a character at the studio that I was at. So I am a big fan of these cloth dynamics uh, when it comes to modeling. Um, that's it. Thank you for watching.